Hi guys, welcome back to Mentor and yet another video podcast. I hope you're all doing great. I certainly am. Um, as you can see, I've changed a little bit of attire because frankly, with the kind of things that I'm talking about on this channel, I should probably look the part like I'm telling you guys to do when you get your job. So today on the podcast, what is the difference between a first officer and a captain? How long will it take approximately for a first officer to become a captain? What kind of salary difference do we talk about? And what's the difference in the jobs? So stay tuned, make sure that you watch it to the end and hit that subscribe button if you like what you're seeing, okay? Hi guys and welcome back. Right, so where do we start with this subject? Well, uh, we should probably start by talking about why there is two people in the front in the first place. So, as you might have noticed, there tend to be kind of two of everything on an aircraft. So you'll have two engines, you'll have two wings, you will have two, at least two hydraulic systems, in our case three hydraulic systems, two electric systems, you will have basically two out of everything that is important. The same goes for the pilot. So we need to have a backup in case one would fail. That's the simple and easy answer to that. So we have two pilots in the front. Now, one is a first officer and one is a captain. What's the difference between the two? The difference is basically experience, guys. Um, the first officer is the position that you will get when you're lucky enough to get your first airline job. You will join as a first officer and you will join as a, in some airlines, in some long haul airlines, you might be called a second officer and then you will become a first officer and then a senior first officer and eventually, and I'm saying eventually because it's not always, if you have what it takes and you've gained enough hours and experience, and also in some airlines you have managed to step up the seniority curve, you will then have the chance to become a captain. So it's not something that happens automatically. You don't become a captain because you have earned the rights to become a captain, in most cases anyway. There are still a few kind of legacy airlines where they will train you until you are fit enough to become a captain when it's your time in the seniority, but most airlines these days, they make sure that the pilots that becomes captains have what it takes to, to sort out any hard situations that it might come into, which means unfortunately that some first officers will never reach the, uh, the rank of, of captain. Anyway, so what's the difference in the job then? Um, well, if you look at the job description, if you look at any operations manual really, you will see that it's basically the captain who is responsible for everything. Okay, that's the short and easy answer to it. The captain is the one that's responsible on board. He or she is the one that takes the decisions, but he or she is also the one who is going to answer to those decisions. So in case something does happen, if we take a decision, I choose to do one thing one way, then when it comes to becoming an investigation, if there's something serious that's happened, I am going to have to be able to motivate what I've done. And I can only motivate what I've done through safety. Safety is paramount, that's what it's all about, so I can't motivate a decision on financial means, on being on time, anything of like that. When it comes to the really safety related um, decisions that needs to be made, they will have to be made on the basis of safety and also on the basis of our operations manual and our standard operating procedures. So I have to know what I'm supposed to do in any given situation and if I'm faced with a situation that I don't know then I still have to be able to make a safe and sound decision okay? because I am the one who's going to be responsible if I take if I make a decision which is wrong in some countries I might even go to jail okay so I as a captain am the one who's responsible for the operation but I'm also the one who are taking the decisions now what's the first officer's role then the first officer's role is second in command Okay, so in the crew, the chain of command will go from the captain to the first officer and then delegated down to the purser and then from the purser it's going to go 
in a downwards ladder down to the most junior of the cabin crew. So that's how the uh, chain of command works. Which means that if I, the captain, becomes incapacitated, the first officer is going to be the one who is now pilot in command pick. Okay. When it comes to the difference in job, uh, in my airline it's virtually non-existent. As in, there are a couple of things that the captain can only do. For example, taxi the aircraft because we only have a tiller. And a tiller is kind of the steering wheel on the left hand side. It doesn't exist on the right hand side, which means that the captain is the one who is taxiing maneuvering the aircraft around on the ground. Uh, there's also a couple of different checklists that the captain is always responding to. But virtually, if you look at it from, um, from the whole operational picture, the job is very similar between a captain and a first officer. They do the same things. So if we would choose, for example, on a two-sector day, who is going to be pilot flying on the first leg and who's going to be pilot monitoring. And the one that's pilot flying on the first leg is going to be pilot monitoring on the second leg and we're going to do the same thing. So on the first leg I might be flying, so actually maneuvering the aircraft while my first officer is speaking on the radio and doing FMC inputs on my command. And then on the next leg I am going to do those things and my first officer is going to be flying. So can a first officer land the aircraft? Yes, of course. Can a first officer start the engines? Yes, but I'm also going to say that within brackets because it's different between different airlines. Some airlines, uh, the first officer will not start the engines, only the captains will. Uh, in some airlines, the first officer is only responsible for the pressurization system on the overhead panel, the captain does the rest. But that's individual between different airlines. In my particular airline, we do exactly the same things. Okay, so the first officer starts when he's pilot flying or she's pilot flying on uh, his or her leg, she or he will be starting the engines and so on. Okay, so the job in itself is exactly the same. So when you hear people asking, all right, so who's the pilot? That's a wrong question to make because we're both pilots. It's just a matter of who has the command and the command will be at the captains, the ones with the four stripes, okay? So that's the way it works. That's the difference in the jobs. Um, the difference in responsibility, we've also talked about, of course, the first officer also has responsibility and a good captain will always rely on his or her first officer and the rest of the crew to make the decisions that are necessary. So if I would get into a jam, let's say we would have a technical difficulty in the aircraft, I would ask my first officer what he or she thinks of the situation and what her or his plan would be. Okay, so typically we would initiate uh, while doing um, the non-normal checklists that might be connected to the problem. So let's say we have um, anti-skid system in up, then we would first go through the checklist making sure that one is flying and the other one is doing the checklist. I will talk about this in a different podcast by the way. Uh, and once we have sorted out the initial checklist bit, which needs to be done fairly, not too rapidly, but it has to be done, then after that we would have a discussion going where I will ask my first officer, so how do you perceive the situation? The first officer will then say, okay, so I think we have this, we have an anti-skidding up that will affect the braking, which means that the landing distance will be an issue, we might have a problem with burst tires um, that might be a problem with directional control when we get down on the runway, things like that. So I let him or her just say exactly what they think about the situation. And the benefit of doing that is that that will potentially bring up things that I haven't thought about. If I would start by saying what I think the problem is, then it's likely that the first officer would just agree since I'm the one with more experience. But if I let them start, and let them say exactly what they think, they are going to bring up things that I potentially have not even thought about, which means that I'm now using the crew to its best extent. Once that discussion has taken place, then I will fill in with what I think as well. So yes, I agree with all of that, but we also have to think of talking to the cabin crew, making sure that they're aware that we might have to divert, go to a longer runway, things like that. I'm just taking an example now. Okay, so. A good captain will always involve the rest of the crew in the decision making process. It's really, really important because that's the way that you'll get most information out of people and possibly, well, in most cases, make the best decisions as well. So you see, that's the way that the dynamic kind of works. Now, this is also very, very simply put, of course, there's 
you know, different situations which might require different ways of doing things, but this is the fundaments of how we're working in the cockpit. Now, another question that was posed recently, which I really want to cover today, is how long it takes from um, when you get your first job as a first officer until you reach the captain position. And the, question, the, the answer to that, unfortunately, is, is like how long is the string? Okay. It varies so much between different airlines and different parts of the industry and different parts of the world that it, it's not really um, possible to give you a straight answer. But I'll give you an answer in my from my airline that I'm working in, okay? Basically, if you're working for an airline that is expanding rapidly and doesn't, that doesn't have a seniority system, or even if it does have a seniority system and it's expanding rapidly, then you can expect to become a captain or get the chance to become a captain at your minimum hours for that. Now, the minimum hours for that is divided into two parts. You need to have 1500 hours in order to get your air transport pilot license, your ATPL. So all of you who has read your CPL theory and then written the ATPL frozen exams means that at 1500 hours you can do your skill test to take out your ATPL and you now have the license required in order to become a captain. Okay, But it doesn't stop there. Most airlines, I would say almost 100% of the airlines, would require you to have at least 3,000 hours of total time in order to become a captain in the first place. Now, we have a maximum flying per year of 900 hours, which means that if you fly full out, including your hours that you have, your about 200 hours that you've had from your initial training, you can reach the hours required potentially in about three and a half years. So that is, that is like the lower limit. That, that's the quickest you can go from, become, from being a first officer to becoming a captain. Okay. Most airlines, you would have a seniority system. And in that case, especially if the airline is not expanding very rapidly, it means that you will have to wait for your turn. And that might mean that people have to retire or they might have to be new aircraft bought or stuff like that, so which means that it can take 10 years. In some of the legacy airlines that are not expanding, 10, 15 years, so you see, that's the difference. You might have it really, really rapidly if you're in an airline who's doing well, but if you're, doing, if you're working for an older airline that might not be expanding that much, it might take longer, okay? But it should also be said that in the, in the older airlines, you might have better terms and conditions as well. I'm saying might because once again, there's such a huge difference in different airlines when it comes to terms and conditions, which I don't want to talk about. All right, so, so there you have it. So, Three and a half years up to infinity is what it might take. But then you have another thing as well, and that's if, you, if you're in the United States, for example, you might manage to get into a, um, a regional airline. That requires you in the States to have 1500 hours, which means that you will be starting off at 1500 hours, um, working way through the airline. Okay? Um, the uh, regional airlines in the States does not pay very well at all. You can be down to 20,000 a year, which is basically, you know, you would require, you would qualify for food stamps. Uh, and then you will work your way up in that airline and then you might become a captain, uh, which is slightly better paid, maybe, you know, 50, 60,000 uh, dollars. But then you work a couple of years and after you work a couple of years as a captain there, then you might qualify to become a first officer in one of the major airlines like Delta or American Airlines which would require you to take a pay cut because you're now becoming a first officer again. But the entry uh, salary as a first officer is still much higher than the entry salary as a first officer in the regionals. And the finishing salary for a, a captain within one of the major airlines in the US is much higher than the finishing salary of a captain in one of the regionals. So you see, it, it becomes very, very complicated when you're talking about things like this. But Salary differences between first officer and captain, well, you're looking at about a 40-50% increase of, um, of salary, I would say, when you jump from, uh, from a first officer, from a normal first officer position to a junior captain position, I would say 40%-ish. But also this difference between different airlines, it might be a smaller one in the low-cost airlines, for example, and it might be a much bigger one in the old um, legacy carriers, okay? That's basically uh, the difference. Okay, there is there's a lot more to talk about in this, of course, and I am expecting to get some feedback on this because if you talk to more, you know, different 
um, pilots in different airlines, they will all have different experiences on this. Um, how we do the captain's training is a different thing and I'm going to be covering that in a different podcast later on because this one is just getting too long. But guys, I really, really enjoy that you're asking these questions. I really thank you guys for, uh, for engaging, sending in questions like that. I'm going to use some of the questions that you put on my last video um, in the live feed that I'm planning to do at the end of this week. So next Friday you can expect the live feed to come, providing that I've got my new computer then, of course. Um, so keep sending in questions and keep pressing the subscribe button. Okay, uh, keep telling people about this channel. If you think that it's helpful in any way, then tell your friends that are interested in aviation, send out links or whatever uh, forum that you might be engaging in or anything like that, because I'm trying to build momentum as always to get more feedback, to make more videos. And for now, I want you guys to have a great day. Uh, continue flying safe and I'll see you next time.